Hello, 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 and praise the Lord. I pray that you're doing wonderful this morning, this evening, whatever time you are watching this. I wanted to come on really quick and um, with my little stiff plait looking like a rat is on the back of my neck and his tail is just like sticking out. <laughs> yes, but anyway, um, I just wanted to come to you and talk to you really quickly about um, training up a child in the way that they should go. Something fell in my spirit the other day. I had shared on a Facebook post how Caden had um, asked me to say a real prayer. <laughs> Every night I pray with my kids and um, even the littlest one, Connor, he can't really speak but he's like rah, 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 rah. you know he tries to repeat and sound those things out so you know we do the now and lay me down to sleep you know there are times you know when tony and i pray or we, or we pray and and we don't do that one but for the most part at night you know it's the standard it's the grace when you know before we eat and it's the now lay me down to sleep so you know Caden said you know i I want to say a real prayer. I want to say, you know, a prayer like you and daddy pray. And I said, okay. So I start, you know, praying like me and daddy would pray. But um, the Holy Spirit was giving me what to pray, you know, for him. So, you know, we begin to say, you know, we plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. And God allow me, you know, to walk in your will, um, to be obedient to your will, to, you know, walk in your ways and, um, as we were praying, you know, he was kind of struggling to keep up. I had to make sure that I set him, you know, short. I couldn't be like, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now, God, asking you, you know, just making it simple and also teaching him that it is simple. But because he's five, period, you know, you don't want to be saying long sentences. But as we begin to pray, I noticed that, you know, the struggle wasn't, you know, as bad. He was you know, being able to say longer sentences and he's up there like, yes, I plead the bullet of Jesus. You know, Caden, he, he'll get up and, be, and preach on you in a second anyway, <laughs> you know, but it's because, you know, all glory be to God. I'm not being braggadocious or this, that, and the other. Um, I'm not, you know, here to say I have all of the answers, but I just want to encourage, you know, those of you and in particularly, um, I want to encourage you all who are um, now in Christ and have children and maybe they weren't, they didn't grow up churched. Maybe they didn't grow up, you know, being in church cause, because maybe you weren't in church or maybe you were in church, but now just really coming to have a real um, relationship with God, understanding that it's not about religion. Maybe, you know, you have some standards that you didn't have before and it's hard, you know, to um, get your kids to adjust. I want you to be encouraged. I want every mother, every father who is... Um, basically just trying to teach their kids the right way and you know people don't understand because being believers you know some people don't understand why we tell our children you they can't watch certain things they can't participate in certain things they can't go place you know certain places you know some will say hey it was good enough for us you know we ain't we didn't die we didn't wind up being a murderer you know, hearing a little cussing, you know, didn't hurt us and I didn't turn out to be a bad person. But at the end of the day, we understand that, you know, it's not being about it's not about being bad or being good. You could be a good person and still be lost, be a good person and still not be pleasing to God. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit was just placing in my spirit, you know, to share the importance of training up your children and, and not being moved by society, not being moved by family members that might not understand. You know, some of you have um, had children and now you may have been divorced or you may have had children um, just with someone and, you know, your lifestyles is totally different. Maybe you're in a marriage and, you know, the, the wife or the husband has decided to leave God or never was, um, they, they, they're a Christian, but they 
don't have the relationship. They aren't, you know, in it the way that you are in. They're just kind of lackadaisical. They're just like, you know, whatever goes, I didn't die. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, drank a little beer. I, you know, did a little whatever like that. And you're just going through some opposition or some, um, or you may have some resistance from your children, period, because we are, we're in the flesh and, and kids, you know, um, they don't quite understand all of what we tell them to do when it's not pertaining to, you know, spiritual things. So here you go, you know, with these increased set of rules that, you know, are just like, okay. And it's up to us to really explain everything, not just be a, you say you do what I tell you to, you know, we have to, you know, really understand the generation that's, that's coming now. A lot of Things that may have worked when you were younger, you know, may not work for this this generation. And I'm not saying let, you know, let your child or, you know, let people do whatever they want to do. But it is important to explain. A lot of people struggle with get, having a relationship with God um, now or, or just coming to realize after being in church all their life that, you know, wow, somebody just would have explained this if they would have told me it wasn't that that hard, you know, that that God loves me, that that he cares about me, that um I can never go too far, I can never stray, you know, too far away from him. If if they told me why, you know, it was not um in my best interest to have sex before I got married, um if someone just let me know that the Bible wasn't just about a bunch of rules and that I was not bound, you know, by any law, but, you know, just, just explained, um, some things to me, then I would have been, you know, better off. And, and that's how it is. We have to talk to, um, our children. We have to allow them to understand there are so many subliminal, um, messages, you know, and agendas being pushed, um, through music, through entertainment, not only for adults, but through children. You know, I had to talk to my children about some cartoons that I just absolutely am like, you can't watch because it's so full of witchcraft and, you know, um, at first to deal with it, I, look for a better option because when they're super little, they don't really understand and you don't want to scare them. <laughs> you don't be like, because demons, you know, and I'm like, ah, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's just wisdom through the Holy spirit, you know, to really teach you when it, when cartoons would come on that, you know, they might like or, or want to see that I notice sitting with them, um, because you can't, you're, you're living a day and time, you can't just turn it on the Disney Channel. You can't just turn it on, you know, these channels. And um, I'm not going to say let it raise your child, you know. But, you know, back in the day, you can, you turn on Family Matters or whatever like that. And, you know, or a cartoon, you know, some demonic things in there. I don't, I'm looking at some of these shows on Disney like, how did I not get nightmares from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and, and witches and this, that, and other? Like, what? You know, but um, at the end of the day, you know, you can't just sit them in and say, okay, this is the YouTube for Kids channel. I've seen some things pop up or being said that I'm like, are you kidding me? It's some things on, you know, these children networks, you know, that promote it is heavily it, it i mean it's demonic it's 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 witchcraft you know speaking of having spirit guides and you know their dead relatives coming back and, and and make everything is making a potion everything is you know almost everything is making a spell almost everything is you know um giving them the subliminal message or opening their, their mind to desiring to dabble in sorcery and in witchcraft and, 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 and to do spells. And um, one of the things that fell in my spirit um, while I was praying was, you know, uh, in Holy Spirit, my mind is going a mile a minute now. Um, but it fell in my spirit to pray, you know, over my children and, 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 and to teach me and to teach me and, and lead me and how to train them. And in doing this, we will then teach them how to develop the right type of friendships. Because, you know, if you just say they're kids and I don't want to put this on them, you must understand Satanists. Um, and I know some will come across this because that's, you know, that's what it is, you know, but, um, 
um, and come against what I'm saying. We're living in a time where, you know, we uh, the word of God says we have to be wise as serpents and, and humble of humble as doves and make sure that we tell, you know, the truth without actually destroying um, the person. But, you know, children don't understand, you know, I can't connect with this person. I, I you shouldn't, you know, um, be with this person because in their their little logic, you know, in their logic, you know, why? What did they do just because they don't believe what we believe? You know, oh, my goodness, you know, so what? She's a witch. So what? Her mom, you know, is, uh, you know, isn't living with a dad. She's living with a mom or, or whatever, you know, and in and, and letting them know, you know, that you, you are, you're not judging. You know, God loves everybody. Everybody has, you know, the... Um, the the God God's open arms are open to every last one of us. I mean, He was open to me. You know what a wretch you know I was, and you know just really teaching them love, but teaching them you know not to compromise, teaching them to respect people and and and, and to love and uh, but to still stand boldly on the truth. And um, when you just teach them the word of God, it will teach them. Um, it's teaching them what's what's right and what's wrong and even as little children they come to you like if you teach your children tell me if somebody touched you tell me if somebody touched you here or there if somebody ever tells you you know to steal you know please understand that that isn't right you know that that is wrong and that's not a good thing to do and if you're wondering how do you teach, you know, your, your children biblical, you know, precepts and all that, you know, when you're teaching them natural things that are not right, then incorporate the word of God. It's not right to steal because this and the other, you can go to jail. And most importantly, this is what God says. Let's go to such and such in the word of God. Thou shalt not steal. Let's, you know, go to this. So, you know, really having that talk with your children, really incorporating with your teenager, even your little ones, you wouldn't. Hey, you have no idea what they can retain. If they can learn how to do tablets at one, I'm telling you, my, my son was months old and he was working my phone and he hangs up on people today and rejects their calls. <laughs> and I'm just like, I didn't even know you called me, you know, um, this generation, they, they can learn more, you know, they're way smarter than I was, <laughs> you know, and they can retain more. And I believe that God made it to be so, so that when we put what we need to put in them, you know, they can start early. They don't have to start praising God, preaching for God, being entrepreneurs, you know, getting in position, you know, I don't have to wait until they're 40 and 50 and 60 years old. God can allow them and release them to do that thing now. But, you know, when you teach them what's right and what's wrong, they will make better decisions. You know, they'll come to you as kids and say, hey, such and such trying to get me to steal. But I remember what you said. And I said, no, you know. So when you teach them the word of God at a young age, you know, and not be afraid of uh, of them missing out. When you understand you're not missing out on anything, you know, the things that kept you in bondage. You know, the things that, you know, you wish had been said to you and a lot of parents, I know you probably struggle with, uh, with, ba uh, with balance and not wanting to church them to death and not wanting to, you know, just make them want to run from God, you know, and make them run, you know, to God. So you just have those, um, conversations, you, you know, encourage them to get with, um, other young godly people and you allow them to utilize their gifts and let them know God don't totally, you know, it's fun being a believer. He don't, you know, if you're funny, he don't stop you from being funny. You know, you just need to make, you know, uh, wise decisions and if you're funny you're still going to be funny you just may not when you say you tell the same you know dirty jokes but when you live a thing when you live a thing and they see you know you go through tests and trials and they see you respond the right way and they see god um perform miracles in your uh, in your home you know the best teaching you're going to do is through your life you know some have struggled because they might have seen you live a life contrary to what you say you make them go to church you make them get involved but you're cussing everybody out you know you're gossiping you are um you're doing things you know behind the scenes that are not you know totally pleasing to God and you know you have to be willing when you do those things to say God forgive me I know God is not you know pleased with this so 
you know, I, I had to repent for, um, I had to repent for that. And that's the awesome thing about God that he forgives, you know, we don't do things with the, the mindset that, okay, God will just forgive us and we can do anything. But you know, that grace is there when we are weak, that grace is there and extended to us when, you know, when we need it at the moments of, you know, of weakness, when we just make bad, um, bad decisions. But, um, it fell in my spirit, you know, to really just prepare them, um, that we really just need to prepare our children. We really need to pour into our teens. Don't wait till a youth pastor is raised up. Don't wait, you know, for all these other people to do it. God needs us as parents to be positioned to pour into our kids. I know it gets tiresome. I know that you're working, man. I know that you're working, you know, woman, but we have to put in that time to pour into them. You know, at times when you're eating, that's a that's a great time. You know, instead of everybody having their iPhones out and all this other stuff, let's let's talk. Let's have a talk. I need to know what's going on in in in, in going on in school, and you know, having it be a ba a balance. Let them genuinely know that you care. For leaders, don't get you know so so busy in in ministry that you and, and pouring into other people and other people's kids that you neglect to pour into your kids this just fell in my spirit you know you spending time with them is not them being in church with you 24 7 yes you're preparing them yes they have gifts yes they have a purpose and being in there serves a purpose but but uh definitely um get involved with them with their personal things that are outside you know of um of church that they that they desire to do because you'll find that some of the things that they do outside God uses that too you know he uses that too if they want to be a hairstylist don't get discouraged when you feel like oh my goodness you want to do all these things but you know nothing really you know in here no you teach them yeah you you know you do something in here what you do for Christ will last but those things that they do on the outside will draw people as well. We understand that our gifts and our talents go hand in hand with the purpose that God placed on our life. None of our gifts were given to us or dispersed to us by God for not. Nothing was given to us, you know, uh, just, just because, you know, randomly he picked out of a hat, you know, and shook it. Okay, Gabriel, shake that hat for me. All right. You know, he didn't need help. He knew your purpose. He knew what your children will be doing. And he wants to give you as the parent, the eye to see those gifts. And, and he will allow you to, um, you're responsible for helping develop them. You are responsible for putting that word in them. So I don't care how tired I am, how tired I'm ready to crash one of us is there to say, you know, okay, it's time to pray. Okay, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about this. Our, our word is this for today. You know, you can even have one day a week where, you know, you pull from a certain topic. If you go to Bible study, you can just to be in line with the ministry and teach them to be in line with the vision, you know, that God has set for the house that you're at. You can take it at home and say, okay, we're going to study the scripture that we learned, you know, at Bible study, you know, here. And of course, you know, you may get some resistance, you know, from some children, even if they grown grew up in church all their life, because that's what the flesh does. It, it wants to resist, you know, God. And don't think that just because you see other children praying and, and can recite scripture and it's just so, they seem like they're just so into God. And why isn't my child, you know what I'm saying? You don't give up hope. You don't think that, oh my goodness, something, you know, you, you keep praying praying you keep living it in front of them you keep on um you no matter how much some of these things are you know resisted not god doesn't push himself on us but i'm being under your room i'm not saying you know give them I, oh you don't have to go to church and all that other stuff no i'm not you know i'm not saying that but, um, you know, just using wisdom and knowing the things that's not based off of your convictions, but go according to the word of God. This teaches them to have trust in God. This is, this teaches them and makes them understand that God is not forceful. He's not forcing something that you feel, you know, and even if it is something that, you know, just wise and it, it, it is, you know, a personal conviction, just sharing, okay, this is a personal conviction and, and, and this, you know, this can lead to this and you make 
make that decision, but make every decision according to the word of God. We don't ever want want our children to feel like, you know, we use God to manipulate them or get them to do what we want them to do. We don't want them to think that he kayandarabasiarobosa. Mm. I plead the blood of Jesus. I felt that I felt the shift in the atmosphere. See, the enemy is mad about what I'm giving you right now. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to hear this right now. He doesn't want you to know the strategies to bring your children and to keep them on the right path. Hallelujah. So you never want them to think that God is a manipulator. You never want them to think that God is, is a, you do this and, and I'll do that, you know, type of God. You, you have to teach them and allow them to understand that it's not for mommy. It's not for daddy. You're not doing this for me. I'm, I'm leading you and guiding you on a path where you can have your own relationship with God, where you can have your own, um, own talks with God. Hallelujah. And making them understand that God is here. He's, he's ever present. When I listen to testimonies and, and I learn from other people's testimonies who say that they went through life and, and they, they, they were with safe parents and, you know, but they never knew that Jesus saved. They never knew that, um, they knew that Jesus saved cause they heard it, but they never knew that God forgave and I could just come to him and this. And I said, God, okay, I'm going to learn from this. Teach me, teach me how to teach my children. Teach me how, um, how to just, um, train them individually the way that you would desire to train them um, for me to train them every child is different teach me not to compare any of them teach me not to compare them you know to the pastor's children or this children or even to myself you have made them an individual they have a purpose reveal to me their purpose so I know what to put them in I know what to have them in. I won't be afraid. And some of us need to release our children back to God and say, God, these are your children. You have entrusted me with them, but you allow me to see their purpose. You allow me to see their gifts. You allow me to be their uh, purpose pusher. Hallelujah. You allow me to speak to them in a way that's plain. You allow me to pray over them and cover oh, cover them in war oh, um, in war, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I just, I just, I just encourage all of the parents to continue to hold on. Anyone who's having issues with a child, you know, they may be troubled. They may be running away, you know, from God, they may be disobedient. I want to encourage you to wait on the Lord. I want to encourage you. Come on now. If he could do what he did, if he could convert Paul, come on now. You may have an older child. You may be an older man or woman of God. And this child may have gotten involved in drugs and this child may have, um, may be living with her boyfriend and you just don't understand i tell you god will allow some children to go in a thing and experience something and come out and be a demon slayer come out and be a mighty uh, evangelist come out and be a powerful prophet or prophetess hallelujah and they can relate to those people they can relate to the rejected people they can relate to the backsliders because of what they experienced so you don't feel ashamed you don't allow church people you don't allow family members nobody to make you give up on your child you don't allow anybody to make you feel like that is a, a work that is too hard for God nothing is too hard for God you just need to con continue to trust God because the enemy should have never allowed them to go into that thing because now they're going to know his secrets now they're going to know their um their agendas now they're going to know the mind of how they now they're going to know how um, one mind whose drug is addicted works now they're going to know what um how to talk to the the prostitute now they're going to know how to talk to that person you know with that lustful spirit now they're gonna know how to deal with the brothers that are in jail or the girls that go in and out of jail now they're gonna know how to how to minister to the lgbt community don't allow anybody to make you feel like you can't love on your child don't make anybody al allow anybody to make you feel like um you should give up no, God is going to turn that thing around. He will never put you to shame. Those who put their trust in him, 
God is going to bring forth a mighty testimony out of this thing. You hear me? I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that you will be encouraged. I pray that you will seek God on divine and strategic strategies on how to raise your children in these last days. Everybody can't afford Christian private school. Hallelujah. But understand that as long as you are doing what you need to do in that house, as long as you are praying as long as you are instilling that word. Come on now. The word of God is true prayer. Everybody, you know, some people don't want to believe, you know, in prayer, but we are as believers. If we don't believe in prayer, you know what I'm saying? And it's a sad day. You got to believe the words that you speak out of your mouth. You got to believe that if you desire, come on now to do some things. So if you desire to put them in uh, your child in the Christmas, Christian um private school that God will open up a door. Hallelujah. Either way they are covered. Either way they are covered under the blood of Jesus. So I pray that you are encouraged. I pray that you if you have it or 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 you know or this is you know this has been an eye opener to you that you would go back and you would strategize that you would go back and pray and ask God you know how to teach you to to see and or, or reveal to you what their gifts are and reveal to you you know um the type of parent that he desires you to be. And it also fell on my spirit in reference to friendships before I am was to be, was to be careful, be mindful, even of, over our little children, the little children, because you know, they're friendly, they're connecting with friends and the Holy spirit showed me, um, some coming through, um, some of these demonic spirits trying to enter through these cartoons. And it fell on my spirit that, um, someone's, some some small child a small child um was going to be invited to a party and um at this party it was going to be uh, a theme of a certain popular cartoon and they were actually going to be doing games like create a spell and um um where they actually would have them like making little potions and all this other stuff. So, um, because unbeknownst to you, you know, all you know is your child talks about little Sammy, a little, little Sarah, whoever, you know, in their class, not knowing that their family is in the occult. So pray over your children teach them when they're watching these cartoons and they're talking about magic. We can't be in a mindset where we say, you know, all oh, that's being deep, whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is a different time. Uh, witchcraft and sorcery is, a, is at an all time high. It's, it's almost presented as the norm. You can look all over Instagram. You can look places and people are rocking crystals. See how the enemy pushes his agenda even through uh, even through fashion. I went and I saw these cute sandals and I mean, I loved them. They were so cute. But in the soul of them, it said, long live Buddha. And um, it's a whole line. Um, and it's it's the tassel fashion. Not saying every tassel, necklace, or earring, you know, is related, you know, to spiritualists and, and Buddhists and yoga, -ish, you know, all that other stuff, you know. But at the end of the day, I don't care how cute the sandal was. That wasn't coming in my house. That wasn't, you know, we cannot, you know, we think, oh, that ain't nothing. That's just this, that, and the other. But you are inviting spirits. You know, we must understand spirits can dwell in things. You know, God told, you know, uh, some people in the Bible, you know, don't touch that. Don't bring this thing in a camp. Don't, don't mingle, leave the gold. Don't touch, you know what I'm saying? Don't touch anything. People can send demonic um, spirits and, and, and spells through, through shoes, through gifts, through pictures. You know, people do witchcraft. So there's no way that I'm going to bring a shoe in my house. You know, there's no way that I'm going to rock a necklace that has a crystal on it. You know, now that I've been made aware, you know, of the enemy's tactics and now people, you know, they don't know what it is. They're, they are saved, but at the same time, they, they have crystals saying it's for energy because, you know, the enemy is a master deceiver. So this is why we got to stay grounded and rooted in the word of God and these last and evil 
evil days. Like I said, you know, people are putting out, you know, what they do and, you know, it's, it's, it's like nothing. It, it, it's, it's, it's the norm and your children are going to see it. You know, they're going to see it. They're going to be, you know, be in school and, and befriend people, but we have to teach them how to evangelize. We have to teach them to love and we have to teach them the word of God so that it's in their mind, it's in their heart, it's in their spirit. And so that they can do what, um, God is calling them to do. So you all be blessed. You all be encouraged. Amen. Bless you.